our memory verse this month comes from Colossians 3.12. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12. You point out God's. So you're going to make a flat praying hand, right? So only half of this and take it from your forehead to your chest. God's chosen. Okay, so you're going to hold up two options and then use your other hand to pick between them. Chosen. People. Okay, so you're going to hold your hand like this. So two peace fingers with your thumb out on both hands and then walk them. People. You are God's chosen people. You are holy. So a long time ago, we talked about forgiveness. Well, holy is just one sweep. You're brushing off any dirt to be holy and perfect. Holy and dearly loved. Cross your arms over and give yourself a big hug. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on. Okay, so we're going to go from shoulders all the way down to your hips like you're sweeping on your clothes, smoothing them out. Put on tender mercy. Okay, so you're gonna call, I call them giraffe hands, right? Because you've got their snout and their horns and their ears. Okay, so middle finger pointing out and your other fingers up. We're gonna say tender mercy. And then we're gonna use that same giraffe hand and draw a circle over your heart to say, kindness. Okay, so tender mercy and kindness. As if, so make the letter I and put it on your cheek, as if they were your clothes. So now you're just brushing crumbs off your chest to show clothes. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be. So cross your arms and shake your head. Don't be proud. This one we know before too. So you're going to make a fist with your thumb sticking out. You're going to use your thumb to trace a path from the middle of your chest up. Kind of like you're zipping up your collar going, I'm so important. Proud. Gentle. So make a fist with one hand and use your other hand to pet it like a small animal. Gentle and patient. So give a thumbs up and put your thumbnail on your chin and pull it down. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. And all of that is in Colossians 3 12. Let's see if we can put it all together. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3 12. Do you think we can do it a little faster? You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12.
we found in you. Love one another, love one another, yeah, love one another, that's what we'll do. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about kindness while we take a look at someone who brought light wherever he went. Huh. I thought my lantern was in here. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about kindness. Which is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. I thought you were getting ready to go camping. I am. This looks more like crafting to me. Well, I can't find my camping lantern, so I'm making one. With tissue? Oh. With this. Hey, that's mine. Well, you don't mind donating it for the cause of camping, right? Ew. Ugh. Kids, do not do that at home. Well, there's like four swallows left. We could probably do a whole show on what happens when you drink out of a bottle. Studies have shown that the average reusable water bottle contains 40,000 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. Ew! Oh, gross! Sanitize your water bottles, folks. Well, I'm not gonna use this bottle to drink out of anyways. Fine, it's all yours. Excellent! Ta-da! Cool, but I think you missed the part where a lantern is supposed to light up. Oh, well, I'll just toss in a few glow sticks. Fair enough, but that's not going to keep you warm. Yeah, and my dad is terrible at starting campfires. Maybe you can give him a few tips. From Flame Master Zeke! Oh, gosh. Let's make it! First of all, never ever try to start a campfire without an adult. And always keep a bucket of water and sand handy. Also, settle for real nature and not just a cheesy backdrop. When you're ready to start, step one is to look around your fire pit area for three different kinds of wood. First off, you got tinder. That's small twigs, dry leaves, or pine needles. Then, some kindling. Larger sticks about less than an inch around. And we have more kindling that are just slightly above an inch. Finally, you've got fuel. Your fuel is larger pieces of split logs, branches, or even firewood that you can pick up at the store. What next? Next, it's time to build. Take a couple handfuls of tinder and pile them in your fire pit. Then add some kindling and build a little tent over your tinder. Might want some more. Just pile it on top. Yep. How is that? You got it. Now it's time for a grown up to bring out a match or a lighter. The dry twigs and leaves should light pretty easily. All right, starting to heat up just a little bit. There we go. Huh. Now, you can feed it with more dry twigs and leaves, little by little, and watch as it takes off. And you can blow lightly at the base of the fire as well. Oh. 
All right, ready for this? Whoa, Flame Master, add some kindling first. Oh. Here. When the fire is big enough, then you can start to add larger pieces of fuel. This is so relaxing. I could do this all day. I bet you could. But meanwhile, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four books called the Gospels. These books tell stories from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. Matthew recorded that when Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Some people were desperate to be made well. Others came to hear his teaching. Jesus didn't turn anyone away, even people who were considered outcasts, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I am Brian. And hey, I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered what God looks like? I mean, God is so incredibly awesome and amazing and glorious that people can't look directly at God. I mean, when Moses spent time with God on Mount Sinai, Moses' face shone so brightly afterward that he had to cover it. But God wants to be known. God wants to be in a close relationship with us, like, like a good friend. And that's the reason God sent Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote that Jesus is the exact likeness of God. Jesus is God's son. So when we look at the things Jesus said and did, we can know that this is what God is like. Jesus showed us what it means to love others like God does. And one of the most important ways that we can show love is through kindness. Now it's easy to think of kindness as just, well, being nice, and that's part of it. But Jesus showed us that true kindness goes much deeper. Let's take a look at three different times Jesus showed kindness. One day, after Jesus finished teaching, a man with a skin disease threw himself on the ground at Jesus' feet. At that time, if you had a skin disease, there was no easy cure, so you had to stay away from everyone, even your own family. No one wanted to come anywhere near you, much less ugh, actually touch you. The crowd around Jesus would have been horrified. Ew, get away but the sick man was so desperate, he didn't care about the rules. Lord, if you're willing to make me well, you can do it. Instead of backing away, Jesus did the unthinkable. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing to do it. Be clean. At once, the man was made well. His skin became completely clean and healthy. Through the kindness of Jesus, the man could now return to his family and friends. In fact, Jesus often spent time with those who were overlooked or considered unimportant, like children. Let's take a look at another time that Jesus showed kindness. Now, at this time, people didn't think kids had much value. So when some families brought their kids to see Jesus, his followers stepped in to stop it. You can't bother Jesus with a bunch of snotty-nosed kids. Yeah, Jesus is way too busy with important stuff. Jesus didn't see it that way at all. He stepped in to flip the situation upside down. Let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. The kingdom of heaven belongs to people like them. Jesus didn't care what other people thought. He welcomed those kids, laying his hands on them and blessing them. He showed everyone around him how valuable children truly are. Finally, let's look at a third time that Jesus spent time with some unexpected people. Now, remember how Jesus invited Matthew, who was a tax collector, to follow him? Tax collectors were considered to be traitors to the Jewish people. But when Matthew invited Jesus to dinner, Jesus didn't hesitate to come. He spent time hanging out at a meal with tax collectors and other people who were looked down on for their wrong choices. Of course, the religious leaders were shocked. They demanded of Jesus' followers, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard what they were saying. Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I've come to get sinners to follow me. 
Jesus didn't just spend his time hanging out with people who were important or had it all together. He gave his attention and help to those who were outcast and overlooked. And we can show the kindness of God when we do the same. The end. I love that since Jesus is God's son, he gives us this perfect picture of what God is like. Yeah, he's, he's not just a king, but a friend. You know, I bet when Jesus was growing up, he always looked for the kid who needed a friend. Jesus showed incredible kindness to us all by giving up his life so we can be restored to relationship with God. The ultimate act of kindness. So, what's our part in the story? Well, it's easy to be kind to somebody when you might get something out of it, like an invite to a popular kid's birthday party or maybe help with your homework. But Jesus was kind to everyone especially the people who seem to have the least to offer. So just like Jesus, we can keep our eyes open for people who are often overlooked. Yeah, like that quiet kid in your class who usually sits alone. Or the kid who is always picked last for PE. You can say hi and offer words of encouragement. Let them know that you see them. And when you're making a list of kids to invite to your birthday party, Think about including someone who may not get many invitations. Or if the checkout lady at the grocery store looks sad or worried, give her a smile. Or if you live in a place where there are people without homes, ask your parents to keep warm socks and snacks in the car to give away. It's all good ideas. Everywhere you look, you'll find somebody who needs your kindness to remind them they're valuable. Someone who needs you to show God's love. Ask God to help you look for opportunities and then be ready to go for it. <laughs> you got that right. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus showed us how to be kind by treating everyone with love and respect. And shining God's light everywhere we go, just like a warm, bright campfire. Or my lantern. About that. Oh, hold on. Well, look at that. What can I say? I have such bright ideas. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, see you next time. time. So it's like your own makeshift lantern. I know, I can like see everything. I don't know how to turn the lights back on. Snap. Oh, worked. Since Jesus is God's son, he showed us what God is like with the way he lived and treated people. Jesus showed kindness to people who were overlooked and weren't considered important. He showed everyone that they were important and valuable. And that is something we can choose to do too. Jesus showed us how to be kind. Say that with me. Jesus showed us how to be kind. Of course, Jesus showed the greatest example of kindness to all of us by giving up his life on the cross. Because of what Jesus did for us, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. Like Jesus did, we can keep our eyes open for people who are often overlooked. It might be the smallest kid on your sports team who you can cheer for with a little extra enthusiasm. Or maybe you could give a smile and a thank you to the person who bags your groceries or the person who clears the table for you when you go out to eat. It could mean writing a note or drawing a picture for someone who's having a tough day. Remember, we are all made in God's image, dearly loved by God. If you're not sure exactly how to show kindness to someone, think about what we always say here. I should treat others the way I want to be treated. Think about what someone has done for you that made you feel special and important, and then go do that for someone else. Jesus showed us how to be kind. It's pretty cool that with God's help, we can gear up and put on kindness like we're putting on clothes. Let's head up to small group to learn more about how we can show kindness like Jesus did. Look at